my name is Dr. Cindy Metz and I'm an associate professor as well as the associate chair of education in the Department of Physiology at the University of Louisville. Many of our dental students will recognize me through their first year coursework where I have served in the past as course director of dental physiology as well as one of the primary lecturers in the course. Now, I have to admit, when I first came into this position, I found myself really questioning how much dentists would need to know about physiology. So, as those that know me personally know, I love all things to do with the renal system, or I love learning about all the different factors that affect the cardiovascular function. I really wasn't quite sure what a practicing dentist would need to know about these subject matters. But I have to say, over time, I've gained an immense appreciation for the role of dentists as part of the healthcare team. And I've since come to appreciate that the oral cavity does not work in isolation. We've learned that the bacteria that are present in the oral cavity can affect the cardiovascular health of patients. If we consider something like renal failure in a patient, we've learned that that can cause a plethora of different effects inside the oral cavity ranging from gingival enlargement to a narrowing of the pulp chamber of the teeth. So dentists are really at the forefront of medical care. For a variety of reasons, you have patients that might neglect to go to their primary care physician, but if in fact they have enough tooth pain, they're going to be motivated to visit their dentist. So you're going to be seeing a lot of different patients, some of which may be very high risk. And it's your job as a dentist to identify some of the signs and symptoms that these patients might be exhibiting. Now, we're not asking you to go through medical diagnoses. That's not our job. We'll leave that to physicians. But what we do need to recognize is what are the signs and symptoms that a patient could be exhibiting? When is it appropriate to treat them? Or when do we need to refer them for medical care prior to their dental treatment? So let's imagine that you had a patient like my beloved father-in-law, and you'll recognize him if you've been through my dental physiology coursework before because we've seen him in other examples in the course. He's a wonderful man with a very complex medical history, everything ranging from leukemia to COPD to a history of heart attacks. Let's imagine that he came into your practice for just a simple filling. After looking through his file, you'll probably recognize that this is not a simple situation at all. In fact, there are a number of different things that you have to consider before you even think about treating this patient. So first of all, you have to understand what are the biological underpinnings for his different medical conditions. Do you remember back to the first two years of dental school, how those conditions work? And given those conditions, is it even appropriate to treat him or do you need to send him for a further medical consult or speak with his physician? He's on a whole host of medications. So you've got to understand how those medications work, any potential interactions that might occur with your medical plan for this particular patient. You have to predict how well is the patient going to react to your particular intervention? Can you predict and plan for any medical emergencies that might arise during this process? So you can see that something that initially presented as a very simple filling can become very complex very fast. And so that's why it's very important that a practicing dentist not only know how to do the clinical aspects of their work, but really understand the biological basis for a wide number of systemic diseases that could be affecting your patients. The Commission on Dental Accreditation, also known as CODA, has several mandates for graduates of dental school. One of those is actually that graduates must be competent in the application of biomedical information to the delivery of patient care. It's a pretty lofty goal. How do we accomplish that? Well, this isn't a new conversation. In fact, it's one that dentists have been having for decades. And we've tried to make strides at the University of Louisville that you've probably seen in your coursework. Many of your basic mm -hmm. scientists will be using examples that relate to the clinical practice of dentistry and vice versa in the clinics. Many of your instructors will be referring to basic science principles. But this isn't always easy. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of divisions that make this more challenging. One of the ones that is most apparent is the fact that I'm not a dentist. 
I love dentistry and I love my dental students, but I don't have that clinical training. Vice versa, for many of our clinicians, it's been quite some time since they went through their basic science knowledge and they may not be retaining all of that to the degree that we would hope. So how do we go about this process of integrating biomedical sciences with clinical sciences? Well, that's where the Clinical Grand Rounds course comes in. What we hope to accomplish with this course is to connect our first two years of the curriculum with the second two years of the curriculum. Our goal is that our D1 and D2 students will utilize their newfound biomedical knowledge and help to refresh that knowledge with our D3 and D4 students. Conversely, our D3 and D4 students are going to be putting their knowledge of clinical aspects into application for those first two years of students. So that we're no longer just treating this as random facts about the human body, but we're really helping students to see the connections between what they're learning in the first two and the last two years of our curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we're no longer just trying to get you to learn random facts about the human body. We're not even just trying to get you to pass boards, although that's important. What our goal is, is for you to be the best provider possible for your patients. And that means learning a great deal about the different conditions that might be facing them. So the teaching faculty and I are really excited about this Clinical Grand Rounds course. We feel like it's going to be a great way for our students to retain and apply the information that they learn about the basic sciences with the clinical aspects of dentistry. The teaching faculty and I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have about this process. And we're excited to get started.